IKEA started in Sweden, and this has formed our identity and our success. We want Sweden to continue to influence us also in the future. So, what's it like today, the country of Sweden? Sweden is as good and bad as any other country. This film will not give you a complete picture of the country. We are focusing on the positive sides of Sweden today. Now, we have asked a few experts to help us describe some Swedish characteristics. So, sit back and enjoy the ride. Swedes have a long tradition of being explorers and traveling the world. The world inspires. It is seen as a good thing to be open-minded and curious, to welcome new ideas and trends. This openness is also about being inclusive and welcoming to new people. Sweden is an open nation. Sweden is different. We are the oddballs. We aren't uh, an average country. Free speech is important, of course. It is normal to question things, and it is normal to accept and follow decisions. Very conflict-averse. Uh, they speak about the importance of consensus. Like they're wanting to solve things in a peaceful manner, which is a great quality to have, of course, but it's good to be aware of. Swedes can be perceived a little bit as uh, knowing best, best services, and a little bit boring. You want to express yourself quite individualistic. We have a culture that values self-exploration. The Swedish society is it's still very open because it's embracing a lot of immigrants, a lot of refugees, but they are very shy in their nature. They're really aware of trends and would like to be a part of them. That's something very Swedish today, trendiness. Well, they look alike. Alamans Retten, the right of public access is a law that allows you to visit and stay over a night or two on private land anywhere in Sweden, as long as you clean up after yourself and respect the nature and the owner. <laughs> Caring is not just about being nice to people. Caring comes from a belief that you get what you give. Being equal, being fair, being sustainable, having systems in place that make it possible for anyone to develop and grow. This is a caretaking society. Together, they think, we are all part of something bigger than just ourselves. What shaped Sweden? I think women's liberation, the necessity of the women to enter the workforce because the economy was going so well, which made it necessary for the government to support universal childcare. Taxes in Sweden are among the highest in the world, but people accept this to have a high living standard. Leveling in society is important, and it should, for instance, be possible for anyone to get a university education, independent of who their parents are. The same goes for childcare. It should be available so that everyone can work. What's really on the rise is sustainability, that people are trying to buy sustainable, poison-free food, that people want to live in a way that's sound and healthy. Swedes are conscious of health and well-being and have been for hundreds of years. People of all ages exercise, which also leads to a larger sports engagement over time. There's a word that's called ny svensk, new Swedish, and I would like to reformulate it to new svensk and now Swedish. Like, everybody who is in Sweden is Swedish. In Stockholm, 26% of the population has immigrant background. I do believe that Swedes are seen as weird, or at least that Swedish society is kind of weird, but mostly because of misconceptions about it being sort of socialistic or people running around naked, I don't know what. But Swedes have a sort of this respect for other people's quirkiness. Equal rights are important. 
Society is constantly striving for equality between women and men. There is freedom of religion, and diversity in society and in the workplace is high on the agenda. Sweden also tried to foster democracy in foreign policy, democracy and human rights. Sweden hasn't been at war for more than 200 years. There is a very beautiful romantic disappointment in Sweden with the rest of the world who don't understand that we have are the moral authority on all things. And, and, and generally speaking, the international community should do as we, what we think is right. People in Sweden are close to nature and they love their traditions. They are striving to meet reality and honesty is always highly valued. Function and simplicity are important. Things need to work in an uncomplicated way. Being practical enough to do things yourself is seen as good. Sweden today is a modern country where living an authentic life is key. I think our farmer's background is a very strong and significant aspect of our culture. This notion of independence and doing it yourself, of working hard, that we kind of, I think, still believe in. From being a very poor farming country, we become a very modern, urban society. Stayed out of the wars. That gave Sweden a sort of head start on peaceful industrialization. It made it possible for Sweden to become a sort of model country. And the model for the home is found in Carl Larsson's popular 100-year-old illustrations. Swedes like to make their homes warm, light and airy with lots of lighting and light materials for the dark period of the year, and big windows for the light period. The home is inclusive for all family members. It has to be functional, yet simple. Swedes worship and protect their nature, and it's just around the corner for everyone to enjoy. Many have access to a summer house or a year-round cottage. Also, up north in the mountains, or Fjellam, as they say in Swedish. This is the last wilderness of Northern Europe. Their specialty is fantastic seafood. Sweden's strongest tradition may very well be the public holidays cuisine. Like herring in uncountable number of tastes for midsummer and Christmas. Well, and all other public holidays too. Yes, meatballs too! And for the midsummer table, fresh new potatoes, straight from the ground, boiled in their skins. Dill on top. Midsummer is the absolute favorite holiday in Sweden, celebrating the lightest period of the year. And in the darkest midwinter, Lucia is celebrated everywhere. At home, in schools, in retirement homes, and in churches. New traditions are growing, like local Nobel Prize dinners, celebrated in homes and schools on December 10th, all over the country. I believe that in a situation where people are encouraged to take responsibility, they will. Because Swedes are very surprised when Swedish companies are involved in wrongdoing. Swedes are very outraged if politicians are caught lying. The idea of a politician taking a bribe, I think, is unthinkable in Sweden. I also think that Swedes have a very good sense of unfornuft, sort of common sense, and being able to bend rules without saying, but actually doing it if it makes the world better. In the past, people were forced to innovate in order to survive. A harsh climate has led to a constant desire for renewal and new ways of thinking. Creative entrepreneurial ideas have resulted in endless innovations. This started long ago and continues in modern Sweden today. Sweden has the highest level of innovation per capita in the world. From the flat-bottom Viking longboat to today's ultra-modern aircraft systems and space technologies. Here are just a couple of examples of Swedish inventions and patents. Did you know? Already in the 18th century, Carl von Linnea worked on the Systema Natura classification of animals and plants. 
the Anders Celsius thermometer, the propeller, the safety match, the adjustable spanner, the Dalian sun valve and lighthouse, the spherical ball bearing, the Tetra Pak fluid packaging, the pacemaker, the three-point safety belt, the rearward facing baby seat, the artificial kidney, the Lexel gamma knife for brain surgery, the mechanum wheel, the ultrasound, Bluetooth technology, and the list goes on. The near invisible bicycle helmet, the Hoofding, which you can't see until when it inflates. The inventor, Petra Vodstrom, amazed President Obama with Sulvatem, which taps the power of the sun to make contaminated water drinkable. And of course, dynamite. Dynamite made it possible for its inventor, Alfred Nobel, to fund the Nobel Prize, supporting innovation and science around the world. They consume a lot of the, the new youth culture. Computers, uh, music, computer games. They're also interested in participating in producing those sorts of things. Some examples are Skype, Spotify, the Battlefield game, and Minecraft. Sweden is a big producer of music, and the Swedish music industry today is bigger than ever. Artists and producers. The Swedish foreign minister, Carl Bildt, tweeted proudly that Sweden is the global leader in heavy metal bands. One explanation for this Swedish specialty may be the long, dark, and cold winters. Also, <laughs> literature and film are booming. From the Pippi Longstocking classics to Lisbeth Salander in the Scary Millennium Trilogy. Two extremely strong women in different worlds, but from the same country. Today's crime fiction from Sweden. Give another picture of that fluffy country with polite, quiet blondes. In Sweden, we have lots of spare time, and in the spare time, we invent and innovate. Hey. And design, which often goes hand in hand with innovation and architecture. In a rapidly changing world, on a global market with competition, you have to innovate. And the way to innovate is to be open, learn from others. You have to be active. When you're dead, nothing much will happen. So activity is life. People want the same thing. People want love and safety and community and solidarity and all of these things. And they also want education and well, innovation and development of new exciting technologies and, and the freedom to think, of course, can give, give the freedom to, to also innovate. Your life is short. Why don't live it while you have it? Do things. Try out the new things. Be curious. Stay young. Don't think that Swedes, I think we're pretty good at doing that. Staying young, childish. You don't need to be Swedish to understand Sweden. Be safe.